Today I'm going to show you how to create this really nice bird bath. It's made over an existing form that I purchased at a garden center. Autumn's a really great time to do that because they're often on clearance and on sale and it's a great winter project and you'll have your bird bath ready for spring. So today I decided to go with this porcelain bird bath which is really nice and comes in the two pieces. The cool thing is that we can do the bowl, the sides, all of the base or any combination of those things. So I usually work really organically but on this project I decided to work a little bit more graphically. I traced my basin on here to do a little design work. We're going to use these sweetie tiles and uh, they're glass and nice and go outside and they come in different shapes of these little polka dots. Know that when you decide to do your bird bath, you don't have to do this design. You can do any design you want. Really this is to show you the techniques of what steps you need to take in making the bird bath. Now um, I decided on this and it's time to set up my workspace. I like to work on a turntable so that I can move my work around without lifting and moving it. I also like to put a garbage bag on top so that all my sort of debris falls in here and also at the end of the work session I can pull this up and sort of twist it shut and that slows the curing of the thin set which gives for a stronger bond. So to start out because I'm going graphic I need to find the center which is you know always a challenge. I'm trying to use the center from the the manufacturing of the bowl and I like these bendy rulers they're a good studio tool so I'm just going to get myself a line to start with through what I think is the center my best guess and uh, now because I'm doing a grid I need to be a little more perpendicular so I am going to take our bendy ruler and measure between the two lines. Basically, I'm just trying to find the center, although I'm feeling fairly confident that um, some adjusting will happen as I'm creating, and that's okay. Now I'm really ready to begin my mosaic, and I always use the little pastry bag trick where I put my thin set in a Ziploc bag and then I can just squirt out wherever I need it. Um, I also have my spatulas ready for spreading. Um, also, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the adhesive that you would use making a bird bath. I would always select the thin set that's rated for exterior use in a water environment because obviously water is going to be sitting in here all the time. So I'm just going to start with my center lines and build my cross and get started all the way out to the edges so I can really see how close I'm going to come to the same number of tiles on each side. And you can see that the pastry bag worked really great because now I can just sort of set these in. All right, you can see I got my uh, baseline cross going. I had to do a little adjusting on the other side so I'm feeling like that might happen again. I'm just going to do a little straightening to get my rows good. Then I'm going to set these in and start transferring the rest of my pattern. So what I did to make sure that this was even is I counted the number of tiles from the center. So it's the same for each quarter and uh, I should be pretty good. I got most of my pattern transferred. I was gonna move this over, but then I thought, because it's a pattern, this is a good visual for me to be able to refer back to so that I stay on my pattern, which is, you know, always a challenge. And uh, I just been basically spreading my thin set out.
and then grabbing my tiles and lightly placing them. I like working off of paper plates because um, I can move the ones I need where I need them and keep track of them. And when you're done, it's really easy to fold them and dump them back into your baggies or whatever storage containers you're using. I got quite a bit done since I was here last and um, I learned some things along the way I just want to share with you. So I'm just going to work and um, because I'm setting these tiles without a lot of cutting, I'm spreading a good area of thin set so and getting it spread evenly as possible. Two of my favorite tools are this Italian spatula and this tiny palette knife because it allows me to get in smaller spaces. So now that I got that all spread out, I also like to make a little glop on the edge and I use this if I need to dip because I need a little extra in a spot. I'm just lightly sticking them because I'm going to need to adjust. Here's another little tip. I always keep a little cup with water that I throw my pieces I pick out so I can wash them quick later. Right now I'm not worried too much about positioning them. I just need to get them in order. Now that I have them all lightly in, I need to make sure my lines are going semi straight so that again it's good for the spatula. I can turn this on the turntable and look each direction, see that they're lined up with the row, then separate these and get them kind of where I need. When you're working up the edge, it, they tend to want to slide down a little bit so you need to do a little overcompensating. And then once that's there, I give them a light tap to set them into the thin set well. Check my lines again and move on to the next part. I really enjoyed this project because there wasn't a lot of cutting until we get to the edge, of course. And you'll notice they're not all perfectly straight across here. And you'll see why that's not so crucial a little later. Another thing I do is when I get up to the edge, I just kind of dry fit the tiles in and make a line with my Sharpie and then cut each tile, put it in place and done. So I like to take an addition different materials at the edge. Initially, I thought I would use the same tiles that I'd use to make the bird bath, but I realized that they don't really finish my edge as well as these nuggets do. So you can see the large gem really protects the edge better and we'll also get a nice even grout joint around there and have a smooth and finished edge when we're done. In deciding to go with the glass gems, I noticed that they're like sort of look out of place because there's nothing else like them. So I decided that I'm going to add this little orange one and sort of tie the whole design together. I'll knock out this tile and replace it with this. And it's going to quickly knock this middle tile out. And remember to wear safety glasses when you do this. Ooh, I lost two, but we'll just stick those back in. All right, I'm ready to attack the sides now. And as you can see, just doing something really random and trying not to think about it too much. It's really nice to have your thin set at a thicker state when doing at vertical edges like this. 
I'm not even doing a lot of straightening at this point because once I get like 10 or 20 tiles in, then I'll go back and check them. Now I'm like no pattern, just pick a color, stick it in. I'll go back with my spatula and just clean this off so we don't have anything uh, interfering when I work on the rim. And remember, never put this down the drain unless uh, you want to call the plumber. You might notice that I have a little bit too much and it smushes out. I haven't really cleaned up anything around this edge, but we need to go back as soon as I get these last couple in. And then go back around at the end and pull out the excess. We don't want anything sticking over where the grout might be. The more it sets up, the easier it is to clean out the extra smushy bits. That's technical. Okay, I think I'm done. I have all my little boogery bits picked. And now we're gonna wrap it up for the night in the plastic bag. Keep it damp and curing slowly. And, uh, Move on to the base tomorrow. At this point in time, I've decided that I'm just only going to do the bottom band on the mosaic bird bath. And so I've taped this area off. While I'm grouting, it won't get dirty and I'll have a nice clean grout joint. Also just going through and picking out any bits of thin set that uh, I don't want to show through my grout. Shoot, a piece fell out. I'm just gonna go back and repair that in a bit before I grout. So I'm just taping off this area and add to keep the grout off part of it. But if you notice, I left this open and I'm just going to like smear grout on here to get this, the color of my grout to come around the lip and sort of cover everything up and make it matchy. to our YouTube channel. And remember, life's a mosaic, you pick the pieces. pieces.